the Jack Benny program. At 48, sold American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Yes, sir. Right you are. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. The better the tobacco, the better the cigarette. And remember, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At markets now open in the South, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select the riper, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke. Lucky Strike. Hey, for it to the Everybody, this is Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's move the clock back ten minutes and see what happens before a radio program goes on the air. So now we take you backstage to Jack Benny's dressing room where Jack is relaxing. I sure hate to wake the boss up, but the program goes on in ten minutes. Just look at him lying there, sleeping like a baby. Yep, just like a baby. Maybe I ought to take his thumb out of his mouth again. <laughs> now, Hetty, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Hetty. Stop it. Paulette, Paulette, please, you're tickling my ear. Lana, Lana, stop kissing me. You too, Hetty. Hetty, stop. Boss, boss, wake up. You went to sleep to relax. Huh? What? Oh, it's you, Rochester. Yeah, and don't look so disappointed. <laughs> what? You were talking in your sleep again. Oh, yes, yes. I, uh... I dreamt that I was making a political speech. That was a political speech? Yes. Well, with those people on your side, you'll even carry Maine and Vermont. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, nothing, boss. You better hurry. You haven't got too much time before the broadcast. No, oh, the broadcast, the broadcast, always the broadcast, like a ghost that keeps haunting me week after week. Monday, I think of ideas. Tuesday, I meet with my writers. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday we write. Saturday I rehearse. Then on Sunday I do my program and a half hour it's all over. And for what, I ask you? For what? For a lousy million dollars. <laughs> no, Rochester, no. You have the wrong slant on life. Money isn't everything. Boss, wake up! <laughs> away. Gee whiz, look what time it is. I better hurry. Oh, darn it. I'm sorry I took that nap. Whenever I sleep, I toss and turn, get all rumpled up. How does my hair look? Fine, boss, fine. You want to put it on now? <laughs> yes, hold the mirror for me, please. Hmm. Rochester looks awful. It's sticking up all over. What happened to it? Remember yesterday when you asked me to shampoo your hair? Yes. Well, the sideburns got caught in the rim. <laughs> Ringer, you wash it in a washing machine? Rochester, that's the worst mistake you could make. A worse one was putting starch in the water. <laughs> starch? <laughs> you look so Nelson Eddie's with those crisp curls. Rochester, don't you ever put my hair in the washing machine. I told you time and again, I want you to lux it along with my undies. Yes, sir. Now, where's my... Jack, we'll be on the air in six minutes. You better hurry. Oh, hello, Mary. I'll be right with you. Rochester, help me out with my jacket. Yes, sir. There you are, boss. Thanks. How does the jacket look on me, Mary? Does it drape too much around my shoulders? I don't know. Where are your shoulders? Mary, save those till we get on the air. And then save them again. 
Oh, Jack, don't be so irritable. I was only kidding. I'm sorry, Mary. Just that I've got a thousand things on my mind. I'm trying to do a program. I haven't got a singer. Well, what about John Charles Thomas? I can't get him. He's on every week for Westinghouse. But I still haven't given up hopes of getting Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What a combination. You and Sinatra on the same program. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Old blood and guts and no blood and bow ties. <laughs> Mary, don't pull that on the show. You'll get hit with a bobby sock. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get going. Wait a minute. Here, Rochester, I want you to spray a little perfume on me. Yes, sir. A little more. Ah. Is that enough, boss? Yes. Now stand back while I sweep the dead flies out. <laughs> flies? Stop exaggerating. That one put up a struggle. <laughs> yeah, now let's go. Rochester, I'll be back in about 35 minutes. While I'm gone, I want you to press the suit I wore down here in the tie, shine my other shoes, darn my socks, and think up a few jokes for next week's program. But, boss, I'm your valet. You've got writers to think up jokes. Don't be so selfish. They help you mow the lawn. Yeah, that's right. And, and since we lost our lawnmower, that writer with the buck teeth and the revolving head is a definite asset. <laughs> yes, I wish I had more like him. Come on, Mary. Say, Mary, what was happening on stage when you left? Oh, the usual thing. Don was helping Phil memorize his lines. Gosh, isn't it awful the way Phil has to spend all week memorizing his part? I wish he'd learn to read. <laughs> he, can't even, he can't even find his dressing room with his name on it. Worse than that. I bumped into him twice this morning where he shouldn't have... I know, I know. <laughs> Come on, let's get into the studio. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Are we all ready to start? Oh, I think so. But, Jack, I've been going through the script, and there's one line that you have in it that I'd like to change. What is it? It's here on page 12. Don't you think it would be better to say, Don Wilson reads commercial instead of, Blubber does plug? <laughs> Oh, Don, it doesn't make any difference. That's just a stage direction. Hiya, right? Jackson. Oh, hello, Phil. How'd the orcs rehearsal go? Everything's all right, Jackson. Lawrence just put four strings on his violin. <laughs> four more strings? That makes eight, all told. You mean he's playing a violin with eight strings? Well, yes, my other fiddle player was drafted. We gotta make up for it somehow. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous, a violin with eight strings. You've seen my violin, it's only got four strings. Well, you're cheap with everything. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I'm sure of one thing, Phil. You'll never be another Stokowski or a Toscanini. Whom? <laughs> Whom? <laughs> Toscanini and Stokowski, they happen to be the world's most famous orchestra leaders. Oh, they are, eh? Yes. Then how come Harry James holds the attendance record at the Palladium? <laughs> well, I ought to have my head examined. We want to hear in 30 seconds, everybody. Thank you, Don. Now, look, Phil. Just a minute, Jackson. i got to get my boys ready. All right, fellas, 30 seconds to go. Put away them cards, take the money off the bass drum, and stand it back up. <laughs> and Frankie, put that away, too. What? I said put that away, too. I can't find the coke. Oh. <laughs> well, stick a mute in it or something. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson.
is or is you ain't my baby, played by Phil Harris, and his death takes a holiday for strings or... <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in our new radio series, we bring you our thrilling, dramatic feature. Another episode in the exciting, adventurous career of that famous, crime-busting, fearless master detective, Captain O'Benny. John. John, help me pick Jack up. Okay. Are you all right, Jack? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> that fearless, crime-busting, master detective, Captain O'Benny. Now, Mary, you play the part of Mrs. H. Beacon Van Storage. <laughs> you live in a you live in a big mansion. You live in a big mansion. Have four mink coats, six yachts, and eighty million dollars. Gosh, Jack, how did I get so rich? You sold your car to months. <laughs> now, of course, I'm going to play the part of that fearless, crime-busting master detective, Captain O'Benny. Oh, Jack, why do you always play those tough parts when you're such a coward? You're even afraid of the dark. I'm not a coward, and I'm not afraid of the dark. Go on, you've got a bodyguard with you all night long. Mary, lots of people have bodyguards. The least you could do is get twin beds. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You fired the last guy because he had cold feet. Mary, say that funny stuff for the sketch. Now, let's get on with it because we haven't got... Excuse me. Come in. Hello. Remember me? I'm Hoyland Peabody, the insurance salesman. Oh, hello, Herman. I'm busy now. I know, I Mr. To... Benny, but I just dropped in to talk to you about that life insurance policy you took out last spring. Why? I've been paying the premium. I know, but for an extra 15 cents a month, you get an added protection now. An added protection? Yeah. We pay you double if the planet Mars crashes into the Earth. <laughs> Herman, who thinks up those silly policies? If the planet Mars crashed into the Earth, everybody would be killed. The money wouldn't be any good to me. Yeah, but at least you wouldn't feel like a sucker. <laughs> all right, Herman, all right. If it'll make you happy, I'll take it. Here's your 15 cents. Thank you. And here, Mr. Benny, this goes with the planet Mars policy. What's that? A telescope. If you see it coming, get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you, Herman, thank you. But you better go now. I'm upset enough as it is. I'm trying to do a program. I haven't got a singer or anything. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, you don't have to look any further. I'm your man. But Herman... Ah, uh, the road to a man to lay. Herman, please. Where the plane does it play? Herman, look. And the dawn comes up like thunder. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Out of China. Come That's very good, Herman. That's fine. Look, now sit down, will you? Maybe you'd like a novelty. No, no, Herman. I don't want a novelty. Sit I, down. I sing a song and imitate an electric organ at the same time. Herman, please, really. I haven't got time. <laughs> Herman, Herman. Stop! Herman, stop! <laughs> People will think this is a Spike Jones program. <laughs> Now, will you please sit down? Let me get going with my show. Yes, sir, and I'll hold your telescope. Good, good. <laughs> now, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes, now, Mary, as I said before, you're the rich Mrs. H. Began Van Storage, and you murder your husband. Now, on the first hey, scene... Hey, Jack, am I going to be in your sketch, too? Yes, Don, you're going to be the big, fat corpse. Now, in the, uh, in the first scene... Oh, gee, I never get anything to say. Every time you do a mystery sketch, I'm the corpse. Well, it's your own fault, Don. Every time you have a couple of lines to say, you always make a commercial out of it. And I'm not taking any more chances. But I have a wonderful idea for your mystery. Some other time, Don. Now, Phil. <whistles> Phil. <whistles> Phil, get away from the window and give Herman back that telescope. <laughs> What a guy. Now, Phil, you're going to play the part of my assistant, Sergeant O'Hara. Okay, Jackson. Now, in the first scene... But, Jack, I really do have a wonderful idea for your sketch. Okay, Don, what is it? Well, I feel if you have a murder, you must have a motive. And in my idea, the motive is a diamond necklace. Say, that's interesting. Huh? You see, you're searching for the necklace, but you can't find it. You're on the right street, but you don't know which apartment house to go to. And I'm the only one who knows. Gosh, what intrigue. Continue, Don. Continue. Well, the house you're looking for is on the left-hand side of the street in the middle of the block, the front apartment on top. Left side, middle of block, front on top. I'll have to remember that. I'll... Just think of left side, middle, front, top. Left side, middle, front, top. Yes, L-S-M-F-T. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! He was going for a... Co 
commercial all the time. You didn't fool me for a minute. But, Jack, it's just a coincidence that LSMFT also stands for Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. Oh, sure, sure, a coincidence. Sure, Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. So oh. round, so firm, so fully packed. Jack, Jack, why did you shoot Don? I couldn't help it, sister. I'm free and easy on the draw. <laughs> I'm sorry I shot you. Oh, that's all right, Jack. Anything for a commercial. Yeah, thanks. And just for that, instead of being the corpse in our sketch, you can be one of my assistants. Now, Mary, when the scene opens, we find you at your... Excuse me, Mary. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I understand that you're in the market for a singer. Well, yes, yes, I am. But right now, we're preparing... My name is Nazaro. Cliff Nazaro. Well, look. Well, as long as you're here, I might as well talk to you. You're a singer? Yes, sir. You've sung professionally? Yes, sir. How long? Four years. Where? Western Union. (laughs) Western Union. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. (laughs) Don't you like it? That's awful. I sing much better on a bicycle. (laughs) Look, Mr. Nazaro, I hate to turn you down, but I'm afraid you're not the type. Anyway, Jack, why don't you talk to him later? We've got a sketch to do. Wait a minute, Jackson. Why don't you give the kid a chance? Let him show you what he can do. Thanks, Uncle Phil. (laughs) (laughs) Uncle Phil. So he's my nephew. What's the difference as long as he can sing? All right, kid, go ahead. What are you going to sing? I'll sing a chorus of I'll Remember, and in the second chorus, I do a recitation. Well, that's swell, swell. Go right ahead. Go ahead. I'll remember how I thrilled at the sight of you. I'll remember the dream of my heart came true. I'll remember. Hey, not bad, not bad. How we stood in the moonlight. So hey, the kid young has possibilities. You know that, Mary? So glad. Kidding, it's all right. It's all right. I'll remember. Cigarettes we forgot. Cigarettes. Must have plugged for the sponsor. Mert like it in paradise for two. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll remember. Will you? I'll remember the look in your eyes at that first fraternity dance, and that crazy, indescribable feeling I had when we first spoke of Francis Sauter making a fire experiment on that. <laughs> it wasn't that little cabbie boss. It was the way you looked at my costume gave me that fuss that day. I practiced the hooting stick crapple ball. <laughs> huh? We found out that love isn't just a character of eight. What's that? It's together we went. We went through all those things. I hey, wanted to a part one night and asked you if you sat around a mountain. You did. Look, what is this, anyway? It was a man of grace that I feel. That what do you want to be, a singer or a tobacco auctioneer? Just... <laughs> I'll remember with... Mr. Benny, how'd you like it? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Keep in touch with me. In the meantime, I'll think about you and your Uncle Phil's option. (laughs) You might as well sit down and hear the rest of the program. And now, folks, to the thrilling, blood-curdling adventure in the life of that master detective, Captain (laughs) O'Benny. The scene opens behind closed doors at police headquarters. Police headquarters, Captain O'Benny talking. What? What was that, madam? 323 Beverly Drive? Well, what about it? You returned home suddenly and found your husband dead. Oh. Well, you want the flower shop. It's Hillside 7599. <laughs> You're welcome. Say, Captain, let's finish this checker game. Okay. It's your move, Wilson. Hey, Captain, you know the phone's ringing. Shall I get it? No, no, Harris. I'm expecting that call. I'll take it. Hello? What? Four dozen white carnations? 
Yes, madam, I'll send her... I know the address. 323 Beverly Drive. <laughs> Goodbye. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Captain, running a police station with a flower shop on the side. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? How can I be a tough-looking cop with a petunia in my lapel? <laughs> And you and your ass. Never mind that. Now, let's get back to that checker game. It's your move, Wilson. Come in. Yes? Hello, boys. I happen to be strolling down this way, so I thought I'd drop in and see the captain. Well, I'm the captain. So you're the captain, eh? Yes. Oh. What about you, Curly? I'm a sergeant. What's holding you back, good looking? <laughs> Look, miss, what is it you want? Well, don't let it frighten you, but my husband was shot and the murderer is still in the house. Leave it to me. Oh, Harris. Yes, Chief. Get the shotguns, the handcuffs, the tear gas, the fingerprint equipment, the fingerprint equipment, <laughs> the squad car, and an A coupon. <laughs> hurry. Oh, say, Chief, aren't you going to finish this checker game? Checker game? At a time like this, we got to hurry and catch that. Madam, did you say the murderer was still in the house? Yes. It's your move, Wilson. <laughs> Chiefy, come on, let's go solve that nasty old murder. Well. Will you go if I give you a kiss? Well, I don't want the boys to think I'm taking a bribe, so I'll kiss you. Okay. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you feeling around my throat for? Anything that kisses like that must have a keg of brandy around its neck. <laughs> Murder mystery, or my name is. Oh, now what? Come in. Come on, son. Mr. Benny? Huh? I heard you're looking for a singer for your program. Oh, no, no, not now. I'm broadcasting. I'm right in the middle of a sketch. Come back some other time. Now, wait a minute, mister. I dragged my kid all the way up here in downtown to see you, and I ain't taking no brush off. <laughs> Look, ma'am, I'll listen to your boy. I'll listen to anybody, but first I want to finish the program. I can't hang around that long. The Wilshire bus is out in the parking lot waiting for me. <laughs> the Wilshire bus up here on Vine Street in a parking lot? That's impossible. No, it ain't. I'm the driver. <laughs> Well, look, I'll have to talk to you later. Right now, I'm doing... Jack, the... the sketch is spoiled anyway. You might as well talk to her. Oh, all right. Thanks, Mr. Benny. My boy's really a nice kid. His name is Wilbur. Well, that's a very nice name. <laughs> Hello, Wilbur. Hello. <laughs> Wilbur, Wilbur, your mother tells me you'd like to be on my program. Uh-huh. <laughs> look, madam, how old is your boy? He's 15. Fifteen? Yeah, you want to make something out of him? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Wilbur's a nice-looking boy. <laughs> I like you. You're silly. Look, Wilbur. No, look... Wilbur, you mind your mother and talk nice to the man. Oh, gee, boy, you said you wouldn't yell at me no more since I had to go to the doctor. You? You had to go to the doctor, Wilbur? Uh-huh. For three whole weeks, I couldn't see. I couldn't see nothing at all. So they took me to the doctor, and now I can see five. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Wilbur. What'd the doctor do? He'd give me a haircut. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look, Wilbur, it's no use. I haven't heard you sing, but I know there's something wrong with your voice. I know. I told you I ain't taking no brush off. Go on, Wilbur, sing. I do. Wilbur, sing. Uh-uh. Well, but if you don't sing, when we get back to the bus, I won't let you smell the exhaust pipe. I won't. No?
Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, Mr. F. E. Boone. At 48, sold American. Many things change with the years. But here's one thing you can depend on always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 44, at 44, sold American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke the smoke tobacco expert smoke. Lucky Strike. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny again. I have an important message for all of our listeners. Again this fall, the people of the United States are asked to support the National War Fund with their dollars to meet the daily increasing needs of 22 major war relief and service organizations. The campaign has been on since September 25th, and the goal of $250 million must be reached by November 1st. Every dollar given to the National War Fund does a three-way job. It aids our own fighting forces, helps the suffering people of our allies, and fills vital needs here at home. So give freely to your local National War Fund now. Thank you, and good night, everybody. This is the National Broadcasting...